Hello, good friends. Today's book that I wanted to share with you is called Gus and Buster Work Things Out. They are brothers, and they don't always get along. Chapter 1. The Bunk Bed I want the bottom bunk, said Gus. I want the bottom bunk, too, said Buster. We will flip for it, said Gus. Gus took a shiny coin from his pocket. Heads or tails, he asked. Tails, said Buster. Gus flipped the coin high in the air and caught it. Heads, said Gus. You lose, and he put the coin in his pocket. You didn't let me see it, said Buster. Don't you trust me, asked Gus. If I were in the desert and you had all the water, I would trust you, said Buster. If I were climbing a mountain and you were holding the rope, I would trust you, said Buster. But when it comes to bunk beds, said Buster, I do not trust you. All right, said Gus. I will let you see the coin. I will flip it and land it on the floor. If it comes up heads, I will win. If it comes up tails, you will lose. That is fair, said Buster. Gus flipped the coin. It landed on the floor. Tails, he said, you lose. He patted Buster's shoulder. You will like the top bunk, he said. Gus lay in the bottom bunk. Buster climbed up to the top bunk. He tucked his sheets in tight. He fluffed up his pillow. He moved around until he was comfortable. Then he moved around some more. Buster, said Gus, stop moving around. I'm sorry, said Buster, and he lay very still. Buster lay still for a long time. Gus, he said, I can't sleep in the top bunk. It is too high. Try harder, said Gus. Buster tried counting sheep. He counted a thousand and three. He was still awake. Buster tried to put himself to sleep bit by bit. Go to sleep, toes, he whispered. His toes fell asleep. Go to sleep, feet, he whispered. His feet fell asleep. Go to sleep, legs, he whispered. His legs fell asleep. But by the time he got to his knees, his toes were wide awake again. Gus, said Buster, are you awake? How can I sleep when you are whispering to your toes, said Gus. Gus bit his sheet. If I give you the bottom bunk, he said, will you go to sleep? Yes, said Buster, I promise. They switched bunks. Buster crawled into Gus's warm bed. Thank you, Gus, he said. I am almost asleep already. And in a moment, he was. Gus lay in the top bunk and stared at the ceiling. Chapter 2. Living Room Day It was Saturday morning. Tip-a-tap-a-tip -tip went the roof. Plink-plunk-plink plink went the window pane. Buster and Gus lay in their beds and stared out the window. It is raining, said Buster. It looks like a living room day. What is a living room day, asked Gus. That is a day when it is raining and you can't play outside, said Buster. So you play in the living room. Oh, said Gus. Gus and Buster got out of bed. Buster washed his face. He brushed his teeth. He went over to the toy box and opened it. It was empty. Gus was sitting in the living room. All the toys were spread around him on the floor. I got here first, said Gus. You can have the toys I don't want. He gave Buster the baseball glove, the baseball bat, and the bicycle. Buster stared at the glove, the bat, and the bicycle. Gus, these are no good for a living room day. They are sunny day toys. Who knows, said Gus. Maybe it will get sunny. Gus played with the toy cars. He played with the monkey on a ladder. He played with the building set. Buster sat on the bicycle and watched. Gus looked up and smiled. Cheer up, Buster, he said. It may get sunny any minute. Buster turned and gazed out the window. Lots and lots of clouds, he said, but farther on there is sunshine, and the sunshine is getting closer. Gus looked out the window. He saw the sunshine getting closer, too. Buster, 
I have been very selfish, he said. You can have the living room day toys. I will take the outside toys. Are you sure, asked Buster? Yes, said Gus. I have been very, very selfish. Buster scratched his head. He pulled his whiskers. No, he said. I think I will keep the toys I have. Soon the sun was out. Buster put on his baseball mitt. He swung his bat over his shoulder. He rode the bicycle off to the baseball field. Gus sat on the floor and wished for rain. Chapter 3. Table Manners It was breakfast time. Gus made the orange juice. Buster made the pancakes. They sat down at the table and began to eat. Chomp, 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 went Buster. Good, chomp, chomp, chomp. Buster opened his mouth wide on every bite. Gus could see all the chewed up pancake inside. Yick, Buster, said Gus. Stop that. Stop what? asked Buster. Stop chewing with your mouth open. I do not chew with my mouth open, said Buster. Yes, you do, said Gus, and you are talking with your mouth full. Only because you talked to me first, said Buster. Buster took another bite. Chomp, 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 he went. Buster, said Gus, you are doing it again. Buster opened his eyes wide in surprise. I am not, he said. Gus left the room. In a minute, he came back. He had a mirror. He held it in front of Buster. Buster watched himself eat. I do open my mouth a little, he said. I am sorry. I will stop. Buster took another forkful of pancake. This time, he kept his mouth closed tight. But he didn't chew. He just sat there with his cheeks bulging. Why aren't you chewing? asked Gus. Why are you sitting there with a mouthful of food? <coughs> said Buster. Swallow your food and then talk, said Gus. <coughs> said Buster. Gus stared at him. Buster ran to the bedroom and got a pad and pencil. He ran back to the kitchen. He wrote a note. Dear Gus, it said, I cannot chew with my mouth closed, and when I cannot chew, I cannot swallow, and when I cannot swallow, my mouth is full, and you said I shouldn't talk when my mouth is full. Your brother, Buster. Open your mouth and chew, said Gus. Buster opened his mouth. He chewed as fast as he could. He swallowed and gasped for air. I can't chew with my mouth closed, he said. It is impossible. No, it isn't, said Gus. Look, I can do it. And he did. But I am not you, said Buster. How could you be, asked Gus. Look, Buster, Gus said. I know what is wrong. You are not just closing your lips. You are closing your teeth, too. Close your lips, but not your teeth. Buster pressed his lips tight together. Then he tried to chew. Ouch, he said. What happened, asked Gus. I bit my cheek, said Buster. Gus thought. I've got it, he said. Press your lips tight together. Then pull out your cheeks with your hands. Then chew. Buster pressed his lips together. He pulled his cheeks out. He chewed up and down. It worked. There, said Gus. Now just do that when you eat. Buster cut a piece of pancake. He put it in his mouth. He put his knife and fork down. He pulled his cheeks out and chewed. Good, said Gus. Now do it again. Buster did it again. But as he did, two big tears rolled down to his whiskers and hung there. Buster, said Gus, why are you crying? Because eating is no fun anymore, said Buster. It is too much work. Gus looked at Buster. Buster, I am sorry. Stop crying and eat any way you want. Buster dried his eyes and started to eat again. Gus tried not to listen. Chapter 4. The Television Set Gus got soda from the refrigerator. He got pretzels from the cupboard. He put on his football sweatshirt. 
He put on his football helmet. He went into the living room to watch the football game. The television was already on. Buster was watching a checkers game. Buster, said Gus, you will have to leave. I am going to watch a football game. I can't leave now, said Buster. The checkers game just began. I have been waiting for this football game all week, said Gus. I bought soda for this game. I bought pretzels for this game. I put on my sweatshirt and helmet for this game. And I am going to watch it. He turned the knob on the television. Gus, said Buster, turn that back. Everyone watches football, shouted Gus. No one watches checkers. I am not everyone, said Buster. Buster turned the television knob forward. Gus turned the knob backward. The knob came off. Gus couldn't put it back on. Neither could Buster. Now you've done it, they said to each other at the same time. Gus took his soda and pretzels and sweatshirt and helmet and sat on the front stoop. Buster sat in front of the television and watched the lines go up and down. Soon Buster went out to see Gus. Gus, would you like to play football? Yes, said Gus. They played until the sun went down. Gus won most of the games, but Buster won the last one. Buster, said Gus, would you like to play checkers? Yes, said Buster. And they played until bedtime. Buster won most of the games, but Gus won the last one. Gus leaned down from the top bunk. Buster, he said, did you let me win the last checkers game on purpose? Of course not, said Buster. Did you let me win the last football game on purpose? Of course not, said Gus. And they both fell asleep, smiling. Thank you, friends. Have a great day.